Hi and welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking with Pastor Andrew and uh, we're going to do it while we're taking a walk along the boulevard in Dumaguete. You know, we decided uh, we want to do some of our devotionals or discussions on the Bible or Christianity. Do them from some, other, some locations in the Philippines or specifically around Dumaguete as that's where we live. I mean, this is the, uh, the thing with uh, my channel which is hopefully different from other people that do this kind of thing is uh, as we are in the Philippines. I've got Pastor Andrew, who's a lead pastor at a church in Dumaguete. Me, I'm just an American Christian with a British accent in the Philippines. So, you know, I'd like to let you see in some of these videos a little bit about uh, where we live and what Dumaguete is like. So, you know, while we're talking to you, I hope you enjoy some of the scenery and get a feel for where we live. Anyway, let's get started with the video. Actually, at this time of the day, it's uh, not too busy down here. It's actually, uh, what time is it now? It's about 11, 11.30? 11.30 right now. Yeah, we're 11.10. Yeah, this place at night gets pretty busy. Usually late afternoon, definitely like 5 o'clock on. Yeah, and in the morning, you've got a lot of people going, up, walking up and down the boulevard for exercise. So, Andrew, let's talk about salvation. Okay. We've done videos before about uh, well, lead me like in. how, how yeah. do you really know you're, you're saved. Uh, but it's such an important issue. And uh, we've been talking about this more, especially since we've been, even in Corinthians, Right. we've been talking about it. In fact, uh, at our last Bible study, we, yeah, good morning. At our last Bible study, we came up, um, what was this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. two. But we're, next week, we're going to get into chapter 3, where it's talking about... They refer to it as carnal man. Let's talk about it. This is a verse that talks a lot about that. Fleshly, fleshly carnal man. And that, that word, it, yeah, First Corinthians, you, you know, First Corinthians chapter one to three is Paul is really talking about our life, living our life for, for God, not in the flesh but in the spirit. And I've been reflecting on this recently about what yeah. does it mean to have the Holy Spirit within you? You know, and I think this comes to the salvation issue again. Mm -hmm. when when you've truly become saved, we're supposed to feel uh, a new presence in us. We're supposed to feel the Holy Spirit. And I, and when I say feel it, I don't think it's like a, an obvious, yeah. crazy moment where you just like feel transformed immediately. Well, it's the it, knowledge of the Holy Spirit in us. It's, it's not necessarily even a feeling, but just the knowledge that we have Him in us. But we do feel, we do feel conviction. Yeah. Right. No, it, it, exactly, we, we do. But when, once we get that, that spirit in us, we should be, uh, we're a new creature in Christ, we're reborn, that's, that's what we're, we're alive in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We're new creations and, and you know, the Bible talks so much about being new creations and if we have the spirit of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, which makes sense because they are one. So if you have God, if you have accepted Christ, you have the spirit of God. Yeah. And if you have not the Spirit of God, you really don't have Christ in you. So how can you have the Spirit? And in fact, that's what Paul is going to talk about in 1 Corinthians 3. If you don't have the Spirit, you're not going to be living a, a, a life uh, of um, a Christian life at all. You would be living what he calls a carnal life. Now, uh, when, when he mentions the carnal life, living a carnal life, he is not talking... He doesn't say specifically, explicitly, if he's talking to unsaved people or not. But the way that we use carnal sometimes can mean that you're completely following your, your desires of your flesh. Right. But don't all Christians at times follow their flesh? And uh, Of course. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't mean that when we do that, we're not, we're not saved. It just simply means we're not living according to what God wants us to do. But I think if we live a lifestyle of carnality, we are not, most likely, following the Holy Spirit. We're not God. We're not, we're not following God. So do you really believe, if we're walking that way in life, do you really think that we are truly saved? 
Well, if we're living that way, and, and we're living that way because of God, then we're saved. But if we're living that way just because we want to be good people, then we're not saved. We're not necessarily saved. Right. You know, there was this old, old, old uh, way of sharing the gospel where at the end you say, now, you have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And you have right. to put him on the throne of your life. But the problem with that is, I believe, and I think we were talking about this earlier, if we truly are following Christ, he will be our Lord, right? Yes. He, you, you can't say, well, I'm following Christ, but I haven't made him my Lord yet. I have a big difficulty with that. And I think that's something that, you know, we need to really think about. If, if, we, are, say, if we say that I, I follow Christ, I am a Christian, and then we're not following Him. We're not letting the Holy Spirit rule in our life. In fact, maybe the Holy Spirit's not even in our life, so maybe we're not really Christians. Something to think about. Think about it. Oh, absolutely. That is warm yeah, that, today. That, yeah, it is warm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yesterday I was out walking around. Uh, I saw my hat today. I got kind of a little burnt yesterday. Yeah. You want to show them your head? Probably no. don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's red, red, like your shirt. Let me uh, just turn the camera around a little bit. And uh, okay, so this is the uh, the boulevard. We just come down from this side, walk down there, and uh, the ocean, beautiful. God's creation is beautiful. So this place gets really busy at nights. A lot of people. So there's a local Starbucks coffee over there. Okay, and that hotel there, that's the Bethel guest house. That's where I'm gonna be getting married next month, right, Pastor? Yes. I'm yeah. excited for that. Looking forward to that. I'm excited for that. We all should be excited for Gary. Okay, so Andrew, you've got a couple of verses that you'd like to read for us? I do, Gary. Reference uh, what we're talking uh, about let today? Let me just read these verses in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But just to remind you, that, just to remind everyone that no one verse can clarify the whole thing for us. Um, it's a collection of verses. It's cumulative. It's, there's a lot of different things um, that, that talk about how, how we have the Spirit and how Christians are sinful but, uh, or, or we have a sin nature. But this verse in 1 Corinthians is, is pretty important, I think, because Paul refers to the Corinthians as believers, or he, he seems to refer to them or talk to them as believers. Yeah. So this verse in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. Mere infants in Christ. So they are infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food. For you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? But I think we, we got to put this in context. You know, the Corinthians were people who were really, they had just accepted Christ as a church and they were trying to grow in Christ. And we don't know a lot about their lifestyle. Uh, we know that previously they had a very carnal lifestyle or a very worldly lifestyle. But he says here, I, I, am not, I cannot address you as spiritual, but as worldly. He doesn't call them worldly until verse 3. Hmm. But in verse 2, he says, I give you milk and not spiritual food. You're not ready for it. So he, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm feeding you, but you're still worldly. You're still living as if you're in the world. Yeah. But I think when, when we say, especially as we were talking earlier, that someone is living a carnal lifestyle, that yeah. can be, you know, we can, we can kind of um, put that in different, like, different variations. If right. someone is really living carnally, and they're really living a non-Christian way, can we say that they're still a Christian? Or can we say that they're a Christian? For example, if they're living as a Christian, they, they, they say they're a Christian, and yet they're going to the bar and drinking every night right. I think it's it's clear to me anyway that that person 
well, I shouldn't say clear, but right. it seems like to, to me that that person is not really a Christian. Well, I, I think it is clear mm -hmm. because the one thing about, uh, first of all, when you, when you accept Christ, you are repenting of your sin and allowing Christ to, to take your place. Uh, that's why he died on the cross for, shed his blood for our sin, right? Well, if we accept Christ, we're repenting of our sin, right? Mm -hmm. What does repenting mean? From what I understand, repenting is basically, you know, of course you're sorry for what you've done, you're asking for forgiveness, but you're also uh, agreeing with God not to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we all do sin, but I think there's a big difference between the natural sin of the flesh that we all get caught up with, things we just instinctively do without thinking and we're sinning, and then there's willful sin. Yeah. And that's the part I'm talking about, Andrew. Mm -hmm. When you've accepted Christ and you're reborn in the Spirit, then you've made a decision to live for Christ and you're basically, even though we know we're going to sin, our objective is not to sin. And that's the difference, willful sin. So if you're going to continue your life choosing sin, thinking, well, I'm, I've, I've accepted Christ, so I'm covered, I'm going to heaven, mm -hmm. so I can go and enjoy my life now. I can go to the bars, I can sleep with different women, I can, I can do drugs, I can do whatever. I think that's where the mistake comes. People think that they've accepted Christ and that I'm, I'm saved from all my past sin, present and future sin, and so they think it's like a ticket to be able to go do anything they want. Right, yeah. And, and yeah. that's why I'm, that's I'm not so sure if someone's really saved, because accepting Christ is a, is, is a change of your life. You're dying to your old self, and you're reborn a new, a new, a new self in, in Christ. You're yeah. born in the Spirit. Prior to that, we were dead. We were born dead. And uh, once we truly accepted Christ, we're born in the Spirit, which means we now have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Mm. And that's going to uh, be a change of life. That's going to make you change your lifestyle, isn't it? We are Naturally. born of the Spirit, yes. And, right. Um, so, so if you're not changing your lifestyle, are you saved? And that's a good question. And of course, it's not going to be an immediate change. It takes time for people that's to change that, and give sure. up their old life. But That's the Bible it. says, and we'll read this in Corinthians, we are new creations in Christ. Right. We are new creations. And that's talking about the inside, of course. But we should let the inside come on the, come on to the outside. And I think that's, yeah. that's something a lot of... What, what you're saying, I think, is that if, if... You know, when you mentioned that people who have no desire to change, there are people right. who have no desire to change because they think that... Because they have prayed a prayer and they've said something. Yeah. They've accepted Christ and through their life in their mind, but they haven't really lived that life. They're not living that life. Right. And is that person, this is actually a, a big debate still, but is that person still, uh, is that person a believer? Is that person saved? And I would say no because of the Holy Spirit's working in our life. You know, look, we can take the Bible very literally sometimes, but if we don't look at the theological side of it, you know, all of these things, that's why it's, it's a cumulative thing. One verse is not going to prove it to you. No. But if we look at all of these things cumulatively, we can say the Holy Spirit does come into believers. That's in Romans. Paul mentions that. The Holy Spirit does come into us when we are Christians, and He does create change in our life. And it's simple as that. Yeah. It's not as simple as that, but it goes a lot deeper than that. But that's, yeah, that's the basic thing. That's the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. No. That's an interesting conversation, Andrew. I think you know, people really, um, yeah. and again, we don't want to beat this to death about salvation because we've talked about it in other videos, but it's still, I think, the most important thing in mm. life is to be sure, 100% mm. sure that you are, you are yeah. saved. Uh, you know, if you think, you know, there's many Christians I know that, that uh, often refer to, you know, I hope I go to heaven, I, uh, I think I'm saved. You know, well, if you're truly saved, you shouldn't have to. That's true. Ask that question. You should know because the Bible tells you clearly. So, you know, we just want people watching this to, to look at your life and, yeah. and how are you living it? Are you living it for Christ? Um, or are you still, uh, are you accepting Christ but still wanting to be uh, enjoying the, what the world has to offer? Enjoying your fleshly desires? Uh, that's, the, that's what we're referring to as carnal, right? 
that's that's yeah. one of those those problems I think Christians have is uh, not fully committing to God and accepting God, but then going back to their old ways and thinking, well, it's okay because I'm saved. Mm. God's forgiven me. And so there's a reason, and I can't quote exactly uh, the words, but where um, Jesus says, you know, when when, um, when you face him on Judgment Day, many will come to him mm. professing that they uh, um, were Christians, yeah, many that call they me Lord, uh, preached Lord, in and your name, and, mm. and they called, yeah, right, but uh, uh, he says to them, uh, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. I never knew you. You know, guys, that's actually one of those, I think about that, depart from me, I never knew you. I don't ever want to risk facing yeah. God judgment day and having him look at me and say, sorry, Gary, I didn't really know you. You think you knew me, but I didn't know you. Depart from me. But he won't say that to you, Gary. <laughs> I don't think, well, I know, you know what, I know that now, but during my 15 years hiatus, what I was going through, uh, he may have said that if I had passed during that time, you know, because I claimed to be a Christian when it was convenient for me, but I was living a life far from what a Christian life would be. So I wouldn't have wanted to face God. Well, God knew what he was time. doing. Yep. But now I, I, uh, I, I don't have any doubts now. Mm. I don't hope that there's a God. I know there's a God. I don't hope there's a heaven and after. I know there is. And I don't hope I'm saved. I, uh, I know 100% because of Amen. God's promise to me Amen. that I am 100% fully saved. Amen. So praise God for that. Praise God. And I'm actually excited for Judgment Day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sort of, sort of excited. Sort but of. I am excited because how beautiful is it to know that when God opens up your book of life and he looks in and says, oh, there's nothing here. And throws it away. Yeah, I think we should, we should be excited. We should <laughs> we be don't, excited. We but. don't have to have every... Uh, every thought we've ever had, every sin we've ever committed, I don't want that read aloud. <laughs> but we're, n we're not excited for those other people who don't, haven't accepted Christ. No. We're not excited for that. That's why, accept Him today and yeah. call out to Him and ask Him to come into your life and, and change. Let, be, let the Holy Spirit change you. What a beautiful place. Yeah, I, you know, I, I hope you guys uh, enjoy us getting out, showing you a little bit about uh, where we live. Um, and we are American Christians in the Philippines, yeah. right? And Gary, when an I American here, pasta in the Philippines. There's, there's four or five foreigners here on the boulevard walking. You know, yeah. this is a place. This is a place. It's a great place for foreigners to come. Oh yeah, it's very popular. Yeah. Oh no, five. There we go. Number, there's number six. Anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. Shall we? Shall we pray? You let's let's pray? just pray while we're walking, huh? Walking prayer. Lord, yeah. We just let's thank do it. you, God, for this time. We thank you, Lord, mm. for allowing us to have this wonderful video online and and god i pray for those who are watching that you just speak to them and comfort them lord god and if there are people who who believe themselves to be christians but are living this carnal life lord god speak to them lord and, and show them that that you want them to transform their life thank you lord jesus in jesus name amen amen by the way, I wasn't closing my eyes on that prayer because... <laughs> yeah, right, right, of course. <laughs> but uh, I, was, I was with you. I Guys, thanks for watching. Okay, thank God you. bless. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye.